Hello, welcome to Endor Engage Model Railway. I'm Jonathan. Over the last few weeks, I've been doing more thinking about the railway than anything practical. I'm keen to get some ballasting done, but there are other things that need to happen first. I was all set to get started, so sorted out the last remaining sleeper gaps. The outer track had a gap that needed a sleeper, while nearby on the inner track there seemed to be too many, so I moved one across. Before I got started on the ballasting, I decided to paint the nearby ground green, in case there are any gaps where the land meets the ballast. I bought some cheap paint and cheap brushes for it, and combined with my lack of painting experience, the result looked pretty bad. I also remembered that it's too soon to be painting any ground, so I stopped before getting very far. When I'd chosen 3mm cork for the track underlay, I'd reasoned that its height would be useful for forming a shoulder to the ballast at the edge. It often seems to be quite high on the modern railway, with variations in ballast height across the width of the track bed. However, I've been gradually collecting second-hand books about the Great Western Railway. I've found that Heritage Railway bookstalls are a great place to get cheap books, and started to notice that the ballast looked a lot simpler. Although I run locos and stock from a wide range of eras, and sometimes regions, I'd like Endor itself to look like 20th century Great Western. Here are some of the images I looked at showing the GWR in the 1890s through to the 1940s, in no particular order, where the edge of the ballast can be seen. I find it hard to make out much detail from old black and white photos, but it looks to me as though the ballast is mostly very flat, and at the edge it doesn't look like it can be much deeper than the sleepers. In several of the photos it looks like there's some kind of cess alongside the track, but not always. Based on these I decided that I needed to raise the level of the ground next to track on Endor, so that it comes closer to the base of the sleepers. I ordered some sheets of 2mm foam on eBay. A range of colours were available, so I went for a bright green so that it would blend in with grass shades if I have small gaps. Mostly, I expect it all to be hidden in the end. I've started the process of occasionally trimming slices of foam to the right shapes and gluing them next to the track. I'm still keen to get started on ballasting, but I think the sensible sequence will be to get the surrounding scenery started first, since the ballast is a top layer. I always planned for the ground in the middle of the layout to be a bit of a mound because I need to cover the point motors, but I'm not entirely decided on whether or not to have a short tunnel. I assume that on the real railway cuttings were easier to make than tunnels, so if the land isn't very high either side of the track then a tunnel might look out of place. Perhaps just a bridge will do. It's also the case that a railway line that loops around on itself in a short distance doesn't look like a real railway, but I definitely don't want to cover half of this loop. Because it's short as it is, I want as much of the line as possible visible so that I can see the trains for longer, so I'll compromise on realism for that. In the last few weeks I've also become a lot more interested in how mechanical signalling works, including how interlocking physically works. It's inevitably prompted various ideas for things I could do. In terms of the main line there are only four points on Endor, two of which work as a pair, so I'm vaguely considering having a realistic setup of signals and necessary lever movements for them. The reality is that I'm unlikely to do anything with that anytime soon, so at the moment the hobby time on this is just reading a book about signalling and watching YouTube videos. Though I have actually owned a ratio signal kit and DAPO motorised signal for several months, neither of which I've tried yet. I did some test ballasting many years ago, so I know I find ballasting quite enjoyable, but I've yet to find out whether or not I actually enjoy making scenery. Regardless, I'm keen for this railway to look more like a model, so although progress might be slow, it will happen. That's all for now. Bye bye.